Ever since she sang live on this morning, aged 11. Is that true? Yeah. Charlotte Church has gone to become a household <laughs> name, performing all the songs all over the world, including my favourite, Cardiff Born, Cardiff Bred, When I Die, I'll Be Cardiff Dead. Absolutely. I'm, I'm only just thinking, what a voice there. Do you, you know really what? I sat, I, I sat, she used to see geography. I sat next to this at, uh, Welsh girl. I think she's like Welsh Italian, you know? Okay. So many Welsh Italians. Lots of, yeah, absolutely. And the first day she sat there, I said, I said all right, what's your name? Where are you from? She went, I'm Maria. And I'm Cardiff born, <laughs> Cardiff bred. Is it? When I die, I'll be Cardiff dead. It's always. Is it? Such That's amazing. Well, so you got in, like I straight mean, in there. We're very excited because you're back in the recording studio. Yes. But yes. For this time for your new podcast. Yes. What's it called? Kicking back with the card. Diffians, kicking, right. kicking back Very with good. the Cardiffians, like absolutely. That. Thank you. It's a play on keeping up with the Kardashians, isn't Probably it? Anti Kardashians. It, it is. It is the antithesis <laughs> to the Kardashians. The opposite. Absolutely, because it is all about working class people. Um, and my working class people, my tribe of Cardiffians and the people that I love the most in the world. And so part of it is about me handing over the mic yeah. to um, my family and my friends to tell their stories. It's like you're giving them a voice, isn't it? It's so lovely. Yeah, but also I think like in, in a more sort of wider generalised point in terms of society, we need to see ourselves reflected back at ourselves. And often the way that media is now, we see a lot of the, the lives of the wealthy and the rich yeah. and the famous and we don't see a lot of like the real life stuff yeah or if we do it's like really dramatized or it might be in, in a comedy or something but actually real stories of real people is so often stranger than fiction mm. and the best better than any story that a writer could write um, so what, did you, what, what was your yeah. starting point when you first decided to do it is it like you'll start with your family and then uh, kind of broaden out. I mean, I know your your local pub, which obviously is a hub of so a community for so many people. Yes. Um, is you know is a is a, a big focus on the in the podcast as well. Yeah. Tell us about Paul. So Paul is a is a landlord of the Robin Hoods, and and like loads of my family have been, and our lives have been centered around the Robin Hood. From you know, it's the the pub that people have their birthdays in, yeah. or you know, it's um, where we have funerals and such afterwards, the wakes for funerals, and so it's just been like pretty steady, a, a pretty steady place throughout my whole life. Um, and, and Paul, again, I think it's like just capturing like change, the change that has happened in the last 30, 40 years. To, for, for Paul, who's the landlord, he's been stationary in that place and it's such a place of such diverse life. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was just, just thinking about it, I, I really wanted A, to capture these beautiful stories of my family, to, to honour the stories of my family, to honour you know, their lineage, their struggles, their strife, their joys, their humour. Um, but also, again, like, to, I think that... I think it's really relatable because I think that when somebody's being really vulnerable and honest about their own fam family relationships and friendships, then no matter where you are in the country, whether you're a Cardiffian or whether you're in Leeds or whether you're in Scotland or... Do you know what I mean? It, you, you, can find, you can hear the commonalities. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Authenticity, I think, is the, the way forward. And I think what's so lovely is you talk about, you know, um, comedy and things like that. When your dad came on, yeah. it was actually quite emotional, wasn't it? It was yeah. an emotional exchange, but also quite funny, because he's quite a funny man, isn't he? Yeah, he's hilarious. And so, yeah, we go deep, because we're not afraid. Like, we're not afraid to of... To go there. Totally. I think it's really important and it's really helpful for, for other people. But again, when you're really honouring and when you're really being authentic with who you are, then things do get vulnerable because bad stuff happens to people. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as you say, like in my dad's episode and in my Auntie Frances, my great Auntie Frances and my cousin Alison's episode, it's so counterbalanced, like going deep and it being like, oh my gosh, that's, that's quite big. Um, but then the humour, the, like the gallows humour that comes in, which again, I think is like... Um, pretty synonymous with the working class experience. Yeah. Um, when, when people are so often dancing the survival dance, yeah. then you, the only way you can get through it a lot of the Chasing time is... The demons. Absolutely, is humour. Did you have a moment of sort of, of awakening? Because you, were, sort of, you started so young and, you know, you experienced so much at such a young age. You probably didn't really have a... You, didn't, you definitely didn't have a normal childhood, but, and I know you've, you've got an incredible network of friends and family around you that keep you grounded and rooted. Even 
given the circumstances you've been through. Did you have, was there a sort of was there a reset like when you know in your sort of twenties or something when when you became a bit more aware of your community and your family and what that meant to you? I suppose. I think that. It's it's hardly ever one specific time, yeah. is it? You know, it's throughout it's throughout the your time that you you start to feel these changes and these shifts. I think that singing has always been a, a huge balm to my soul. Like I have I have managed to soothe myself and love myself up through mm. through singing and making sound and, and healing myself in ways, um, and nature like real connection to, to nature and the land around me, the trees, the rivers the, yeah. of Cardiff um, has, has also really, yeah, really enabled me to stay really rooted. That's what you're doing now a lot as well, aren't you? You've got the whole wellness. Is it a retreat you have? Or yeah. I mean, I want to go. Yeah! I so want to go. Oh, I really want you to come, Alison. Me too. I want to experience these sound baths. Yeah, really absolutely. Well, the Dreaming is just this absolutely glorious retreat centre that I set up a year ago now, in right smack bang in the centre of Wales. Um, and it's in the Cambrian Mountains. It's got two waterfalls. It's absolutely stunning, beautiful rooms. And we right. do lots of wellness therapies. So it's at the, our three pillars are nature connection, sound therapy in all of its forms, and um, also ceremony. Can you show us some of this sound therapy just while you're here? Yeah. With your lovely harp. Sure. So this is a beautiful reverie harp. So I'm a practitioner at The Dreaming and I do sound therapy yeah. stuff, some of which is sound healing or sound journeys, some of which, of which is helping people reconnect and find their voice. Shall I just close my eyes while you're doing it? You can, but you could, do you want to sing with me? Yes, Yeah, please. sing. Let's okay. do it. So this is a reverie harp. So, Duma, if you give me... Uh... This episode of the podcast, Kicking Back with the Cardiffians, available Thursday, wherever you get your podcast. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you so much. Lovely to see you as always. Local.